Yes, yes, yes. Good morning and welcome. My name is Marilyn Gay and I'll be the service leader today. My pronouns are she and her. Um, I want to congratulate all of you for the timeliness of your arrival today. <laughs> the uh, chore of changing our clocks is still with us despite the referendum. And uh, <laughs> maybe in the before times, when you were traveling, you were experiencing jet lag much worse than this. But um, we, can, we can adjust, and it is one of the rites of spring. You know, uh, in March, we change our clocks, and uh, even though everywhere we look, it's still a world of snow and winter, the air feels fresh and moist, and um, we have holidays to look forward to. Later on this week, we'll be celebrating St. Patrick's Day. Doesn't that make you think of green and spring? And, um, you know, it, it, the time is marching and soon winter will end, I hope. This is, this is a, a day when we explore faith and we have faith that winter will end. So, uh, the first order of business, of course, is announcements, and there are a few. Oksana, would you like to come up and tell us about the film festival in celebration of our new technology? We have the ability to show films in a very special way. Thank you, Marilyn. As we start to celebrate more light coming into our lives, we thought this would be a great time to have our Unitarian Film Festival. So we're opening up our space next Saturday night at six o'clock to show a movie on the big screen, but also to have movie spaces, film spaces for young people uh, as well. So we'll be watching The Walk here uh, on the big screen. We encourage you to come out, it's free of charge and we'll have snacks and we'll be social distanced. And we'll have our young people with Maria watching their shows and we'll have cartoons set up for the young people as well. We'll do a quick run through um, afterwards today. So if you'd like to stay and chat with me, you're more than welcome to, thank you. Thank you, Oksana. Um, as I look out over the sanctuary, I see that all of you are wearing masks, and I want to mention that while we don't have a strict policy, we do request that people come to, the, come to church in good health and come to church wearing masks. Um, uh, Rosemary and Oksana and I are here in a mask-free zone <laughs> just while we're speaking and, and sitting socially distanced apart. But um, thank you for your cooperation. Um, a mask used to be a necessary nuisance, but now I think it also communicates consideration and respect for ourselves and each other. And um, so thank you for wearing masks. Um, I wanted to mention, as a uh, preview of coming attractions, that in the first weekend in May, we will again, no, don't all cheer, um, we will have a, another mammoth garage sale. This is a huge fundraiser. <laughs> this is a huge fundraiser for our church. And in the past, we've um, earned about $4,000 uh, with the sale of items that we're just taking up dust at your house or taking up closet space. So you can begin your spring cleaning now and uh, put things aside. It, really? Oh, oh, I stand corrected. That's even better news. The number was 10,000? 10,000. And Brenda, what? 
We're not collecting the items for the sale until later, but you can begin collecting at home and getting getting ready for your donations. Now, ahem, we have one more announcement. Well, it's not really an announcement, but one of our members, one of our long serving and well serving members is celebrating her 99th birthday soon. So Corey Ellis, today's actually today, and um, wherever you are out in the ether, this tribute is to you. Well, um, actually, there's one more that <laughs> as at not exactly an afterthought, we wanted to um, wish Jan McMillan a happy birthday. She's turning 75 this week, and that happy birthday was intended for her. But um, we've got another one coming for <laughs> for Ruth Patrick who actually will, she's the one who's going to be nine or is 99 today. Take it away. You might notice the whiteboard at the back of the church. You're asked to grab a felt pen and write down what, what part of your life required a leap of faith. And uh, most of you have already passed this way and written, but on your way out, you might add something that has occurred to you during the service. So I think that concludes our announcements. And now we will have a prelude. Um, I'm reminded that those of you who are watching online won't have access to the whiteboard where you can write in person your 
her, your, your own leap of faith, but that can be added to the chat line and shared with us in that way. So now the formal good morning process. Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. I've already introduced myself. I'm Marilyn Gay, she, her, etc. As Unitarian Universalists, we're bound together not by a common set of beliefs, but by our promise to support one another in our individual searches for truth and meaning, guided by our principles and drawing from many sources. We hope you feel welcome here. Whatever you believe or don't believe, whoever you love, however you understand the term family, whatever your age, race, or ability, you are all welcome here. We invite you to join us in a journey of free thought, spiritual questing, and justice making for as long as you feel comfortable doing so. We don't expect it to be a life sentence necessarily. We extend a special welcome to our visitors this morning. And even though we're supposed to abstain from personal conversations, you can go ahead and chat with anyone you like after the service. We begin our gathering acknowledging that we are located on Treaty 6 territory. We respect the histories, languages, and cultures of First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and all the First Peoples of Canada, whose presence continues to enrich our vibrant community. Our community extends beyond Sunday morning gatherings. We have a morning newsletter available online, and you can join our virtual community on Facebook and Twitter. Keep up to date with happenings in our extended community. Now, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Just let us let go for a time of the everyday world, and such a world it is, my gosh. We'll quiet ourselves, our phones, and devices, and we'll create space in this hour to simply be together in the spirit of life and love as we gather. In order to focus ourselves for the service, I invite you to an opening time of reflection as we listen, well, we've listened to the prelude, sorry, that was a misprint, but um, could you all, uh, while you quiet your minds, also quiet any device that might be in your purse or pocket that would interrupt our thought. <sighs> Now we will light the chalice, and um, I have not designated. Oh, Rosemary would like to light the chalice. Some people uh, really appreciate that honor, and we like to share it with others. The reading for our chalice is, is from Rebecca A. Savage. We light our flaming chalice each week with a simple spark to make holy our time together. With this flame, may our highest intentions be refreshed. With this flame, may we remember who we are and whose we are. With this flame, may our faith be renewed and reignited to guide our journey. Amen, and may it be so. Now we're going to sing a hymn. It will be hymn 389, Gathering Together in the Big Hardcover Hymnal. Hymn number 389. Pardon? We're going to sing it three times through. Just follow the piano, it'll take you there.
We're getting you used to songs that are round. Soon we're going to make you sing in rounds. Isn't it going to be great? Marilyn, if I could ask you to switch the pages. We're going to read a little story called Jabari Jumps by Gaia Cornwall. And the images should come up. How are we doing? Well, she'll catch up. So this is a little book about um, a leap. We're talking about leaps of faith today, and this is a little book that talks about that. I'm jumping off the diving board today, Jabari told his dad. Really? said his dad. The diving board was high and maybe a little scary, but Jabari had finished his swimming lessons and passed his swim test, and now he was ready to jump. I'm a great jumper, said Jabari, so I'm not scared at all. Jabari watched the kids climb the long ladder. They walked all the way out to the end of the board as big as tiny bugs. Then they stood on the edge. They spread their arms and they bent their knees and sprang up, up, up. And then they dove down, down, down. Splash. Looks easy, said Jabari. But when his dad squeezed his hand, he squeezed back. Jabari stood at the bottom of the ladder. He looked up. You can go before me if you want, he told the kid behind him. I need to think about what kind of special jump I'm going to do, Jabari thought and thought. Jari, Jabari started to climb up and up. This ladder is very tall, he thought. Uh, are you OK? His dad called his dad. I I'm just a little tired, said Jabari. Uh, maybe you should climb down and take a little rest, said his dad. A tiny rest sounded like a really good idea. When he got to the bottom, Jabari remembered something. I forgot to do my stretches, he said to his dad. And, and I think tomorrow might be a better day for jumping, Jabari said. They looked up at the diving board together. It's okay to feel a little scared, said his dad. Sometimes, if I feel a little scared, I take a deep breath and I tell myself, I am ready. And you know what? Sometimes it stops feeling scary and feels like a little surprise. Jabari loved surprises. Jabari took a deep breath and felt it fill his body from the ends of his hair right down to the tips of his toes. Jabari looked up. He began to climb up and up and up and up until he got to the top. Jabari stood up straight. He walked all the way to the end of the board. His toes curled around the rough edge. Jabari looked out as far as he could see. He felt like he was ready. I love surprises, he whispered. He took a deep breath and spread his arms and bent his knees and then he sprang up, up off the board, flying. Jabari hit the water with a, what was it? Splash. Okay, that wasn't bad. Let's do another splash. Ready? One, two, three. Splash. Much better. <laughs> down, down, down he went and then back up. That's the part that always scares me, is the going down, down, down part. Am I going to get back up, up, up in time? And then back up. Whoosh. Jabari, you did it, said his dad. I did it, said Jabari. I'm a great 
jumper. And you know what? What, asked his dad. Surprise double backflip is next. I hope you enjoyed that wonderful little story. Thank you, Marilyn. That's a, that's a tricky thing to get. Thank you. All right. And now I'm going to, um, thank you. We're going to, yep, leave it there. Thank you. Perfect. And now it's time for um, uh, sharing our abundance. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> One of the purposes of this church community is to encourage all who gather here to grow more generous in spirit and action. In addition to supporting this community, we also make a monthly commitment to a wider community. One half of the unidentified cash that is received is given to an outside organization. So our offering allows us to exercise that all important generosity of spirit, an offering that will support this self-supporting church and its many ministries. For the month of March, we are supporting the International Council of Unitarian Universalists. And this week, our donation will go specifically to the, the uh, CUC. Who knows what that stands for? It's the Canadian Unitarian Council. For those in the sanctuary, you can use the envelopes found on the inside cover of the hymn book if you wish to receive a tax receipt for your gift. Please indicate on the envelope your contact information so that the tax receipt will come to you at the end of the year. Many of our members and friends have monthly or annual annually uh, donations through an automatic withdrawal from their accounts. Offering plates are located by the exit, do Oop. By the exit doors, and uh, you can make your contribution as you leave after the service. We can't pass the plate around like we used to do, but maybe that day we'll return. That was a nice uh, tradition. So we thank you for your generosity of spirit and action. And though we all, through all we do here in this community and in the wider world, we are involved in the important spiritual work of creation and compassion. Now, um, I believe the words for our um, sharing abundant song will appear. Oh, yes. Okay, so let's all sing together two times from you we receive. back again. <sighs> March is our canvas month at UCE, when we ask our congregation to make a financial pledge to help keep our church going for another year. Each year in March, as part of the canvas, we've asked one of our contributors to talk. Ah, and he's standing right there ready to come up. <laughs> Um, to talk about why UCE is important to them and why their pledge of financial support is uh, valued here at UCE. Today, we'll hear from John Pater, and uh, I'll clear away and make a space for him at the podium. Hello, everyone. Nice to do a little walk down the stairs from the sound booth. 
So the question of why do I choose to donate to UCE came to me. So Michelle and I, um, I share a bank account with Michelle. Um, so I can speak about the royal we. Um, why we donated to UCE for the last 22 years that we've been here. But it made me pause and think about why I donate at all to various causes. And it came to me that there are probably three main reasons why we have been donating uh, to the causes we've donated to over the years. One of them is that uh, it's an organization that enriches our lives. Another reason is that the organization shares our values and perspectives. And the other reason is that organizations that do good in the world. So let me explain those three a little bit. Organizations that enrich our lives, that personally enrich us, that personally inspire us. So for example, the reason I donate to the Yardbird Suite is because I love jazz. I love that venue. Um, but it's very almost a selfish reason for me to donate there because it it's, totally benefits me. So I almost do it for selfish reasons, that I want that organization to exist, I want that jazz to exist. Therefore, for very almost selfish reasons, I will donate there. In some ways, the same thing here for some of the reasons why we donate to UCE. Um, I get to sing in a choir. I've been singing in a choir, Coriolis, for 22 years. If I join another community choir, it would cost me about $300 a year. So the reason, one of the reasons I donate to this church is because I get to sing in a choir. It's almost a selfish reason. Um, sure, I'm sure my voice benefits others too, uh, but really the reason I sing in the choir is for me. So it personally enriches me. So that's one of the reasons why we donate to UC. Actually, another reason is I get to play up in the sound booth. That's a selfish reason. I know it kind of helps everybody else out, but, but I used to be a DJ back 40 years ago, and so I get to play again as a sound technician. Um, so it's almost a selfish reason for me to get to play in this sound booth space. So that's one of the reasons why we donate to UC is that it's an organization that enriches our lives personally. You said, another reason we give to organizations is that they share our values and perspectives. That's, that seems like it's almost a given. Um, you're not going to give to something that doesn't share your values and perspectives. But for various political parties um, or for various causes in the, in the, out in the world, um, it is for that reason um, that we'll donate because we share those values and perspectives of that organization. Then related to it is our third reason for why we donate to various causes, and that it's because it's an organization that does good in the world. Uh, it changes the world. Um, to use an old language from my Calvinist Christian past, it's a kingdom cause. And that's a very important reason for us to donate to various causes, is that it actually supports the work and does good in the world. And that's yet another reason why we donate to UCE, because it is doing good in the world. It's separate from what I gain from it personally. I, I, I donate to it because it actually does some good in the world, separate from whatever I may get out of it. So those are three, and, and because UCE checks off every, all, all three of those uh, boxes, that's a really big reason why UCE is one of our biggest um, contributions that we give, because it checks off three boxes, not just one or two. And so that's why we give um, and continues to get a pretty high priority from us. And that's why we will continue to provide our renewable energy, and I know that's the theme this year, to UCE and pledge our continued support to this organization. Thank you. Thank you, John. Really appreciate. Um, so there's the website and the forms and what you can do and to get your pledges in by um, the end of the month so that we can uh, figure out our budget. Okay, so the, we're going to sing hymn number 194, Faith is a Forest, and this is a hymn that um, is familiar to me only, and um, I like it, so I hope you do too. Faith is a Forest, Karen is going to play it through, you heard it for the prelude, Karen is going to play it through all the way once, and then um, you can rise as you are willing and able or as the spirit moves you, and um, to sing Faith is a Forest, hymn number 194. So I, I will be inviting you to stand towards the end of her playing it through once. Thank you. 
Thank you. We enter into a time of quiet meditation. It doesn't have to be super quiet, but it's a time for us to quieten our bodies and our minds. So I invite you to, in preparation for that, to take a deep cleansing breath if you want. It's always by invitation, not demand. And as you do that, notice how your breath feels as it's coming in and out of your body and maybe do some wiggling around to find a that center in your body and feel the chair support you or the bed or the couch or the floor however you are experiencing this service I'm going to read a poem by David White called Start Close In. I'm going to read it twice with a small amount of silence in between, and then we're going to sing There is a Love, our hymn of the month, and those words will come up on the screen. And you should have, um, have the little pieces of paper as well. This is our hymn of the month, so pretty soon we'll have it memorized. Start close in. Start close in. Don't take the second step or the third. Start with the first thing. Close in. The step you don't want to take. Start with the ground you know. The pale ground beneath your feet. Your own way to begin the conversation. Start with your own question. Give up on other people's questions. Don't let them smother something simple. To hear another's voice, follow your own voice. Wait until that voice becomes an intimate, private ear that can really listen to another. Start right now. Take a small step you can count your own. Don't follow someone else's heroics. Be humble and focused. Start close in. Don't make, don't mistake that other for your own. Start close in. Don't take the second step or the third. Start with the first thing close in. The step you don't want to take. Start close in. Don't take that second step or the third. Start with the first thing close in. The step you don't want to take. Start with the ground you know. The pale ground beneath your feet. Your own way to begin the conversation. Start with your own questions. Give up on other people's questions. Don't let them smother something simple. To hear another's voice, follow your own voice. Wait until that voice becomes an intimate, private ear that can really listen to another. Start right now. Take a small step you can call your own. Don't follow someone else's heroics. Be humble and focused. Start close in. Don't make that other for your own. Don't mistake that other for your own. Start close in. Don't take the second step or the third. Start with the thing, first thing close in. The step you don't want to take.
sing together, there is a love, staying seated and by invitation. And in the spirit of that love, as we hold one another, I invite you to light candles as you would like, or to put something in the chat that is on your heart, on your mind, something that is bringing you joy, or something that is concerning you. I invite you to do that as you wish now.
Could you light the Ukrainian candle, please? Thank you. Oh, we might need a dry candle to light. Thank you, Marilyn is going to light the Ukrainian candle. We're going to have this up um, for a little while or how long we wish. So we hold the people of Ukraine in our hearts. And if you could light one more candle for us, please, Marilyn, thinking about all those joys and concerns that we have in our heart that we hold together. And let us sing again, there is a love as we hold all of this, all of us together. you. These are tender times and joyful times, and it's good to pause and remember these. Faith, leaping not required. We did talk about what big leaps <coughs> we've taken on the whiteboard and hopefully in the chat you can put some of those things down now in the chat as, as well. <coughs> what are big leaps of faith or not that you have taken? What is meant by a leap of faith? And what do I mean when I say we can find faith without leaping? A leap of faith could be thought of as those moments when we close our eyes tight and just go for it. Have you ever had that? You just go for it. You're like, I just have to do this. Or we finally make a decision. Or maybe even we're taking a chance on love. Perhaps it's that thought that if I'm doing something with good intentions, with love in my heart, I can leap and a soft landing will appear. Sometimes that works out, and sometimes it doesn't. Oftentimes a leap of faith is made when we are needing to make a decision on something. But is it really a leap? Or the end of a carefully thought out plan, a thinking about our choices, weighing the pros and cons, Wondering what it would be like if I made this decision or that one. This thoughtful process of decision making is sometimes called a discernment process. When people decide they want to be ministers, they go through a discernment process. I never really understood what that meant. I figured it out as I went through it. The thoughtful process, uh, this, um, this discernment process, actually can be taken up another, another notch to what's called spiritual discernment, something quite lofty, in, it sounds like. But it simply means to weigh the pros and cons carefully, paying close attention to how each one makes us feel. I call this trying on a decision. And it works like this. 
say you're thinking about changing careers or going back to school or supporting a cause you believe in. First, you look at how saying yes makes you feel. You kind of pretend in your mind, you try to trick yourself that you've already made the decision. And perhaps to go back to school and get a first aid ticket or a master's degree. And then you go through a couple of days of having made the decision. Yes, I'm going to do this. How, how does it actually feel? What questions come up for you? Examine the responses and reactions. Then, after a couple of hours or a couple of days, depending on your timeline, then decide, no. No, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going back to school. I'm not going to take that job. I'm not going to go out with that person. I'm not going to do this. Make that decision and then decide what comes up for you. Wear that decision like a cloak around you. Now, after this process, you've got something to base the decision upon. That's called spiritual discernment. Not a leap of faith. But it does take faith, doesn't it? You need to have faith in yourself, in knowing what is best for you, in having faith in what your emotions and responses were telling you. That's a faith worth having, isn't it? We throw around this word faith. It's been used to delineate denominations and religions like they belong to the Catholic faith or they subscribe to the Hindu faith or Presbyterian faith. We also say things like, I have faith in you, or I don't have faith in you. This type of faith is based on past outcomes of when we have put our faith into someone or something, and it was or wasn't a good idea. There was follow-through and a positive a response, allowing us to have faith, or the opposite. No follow-through, a bad outcome. So we learned not to have faith in that particular thing. Once again, no leaping required. I wonder if the faith we have in ourselves is based upon our past successes, failures, and learning to do better each and every time we fail and then figure out a better way. So March is Canvas Month. That's called burying the lead, in case anybody didn't know. <laughs> I thought I'd say that in case to make Susan laugh. <laughs> That's my goal in life, to make Susan laugh. So, but before I talk about the canvas, I'd like to give you a few church bulletin bloopers to get us in the mood. I, I would like to say that these are old, and therefore the language isn't as inclusive as we use now. But here's the first one. On the topic of church fundraisers, like our new, ma our upcoming mammoth, Garage sale. Ladies, don't forget the rummage sale. It is a good chance to get rid of those things not worth keeping around the house. Bring your husbands. <laughs> Here's another one. This one, a message in the bulletin at a funeral service. Please place your donation in the envelope along with the deceased person you want to be remembered. <laughs> That's the call to, oof. And one more. <laughs> My personal favorite. I, I don't know if I can get through it without laughing. <laughs> <clears throat> Next Sunday, a special collection will be taken to, to, to defray the cost of the new carpet. All those wishing to do something on the carpet <laughs> should come forward and do so now. <laughs> 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 
That, we have to save that for the blessing of the animals. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, <laughs> to, for something completely different, I'd like to read a very few paragraphs from Fishing Tips. How Curiosity Transformed a Community of Faith by Reverend Dr. John Pentland. He is the minister at Hillhurst United Church in Calgary. Many times in my ministry, I have felt constricted to an approach to growth that says, let's pay for what we have, an approach to finance that amount to paying bills and not much else. In contrast, Hillhurst has adopted a let's pay for what we want philosophy. Every time we want, I experience the difference in energy that they, that they inspire. The former feels cautionary, fearful, constrained, shackles on. And the latter feels energetic, inviting, shackles off. The latter is not a call to foolishness or impulsiveness. It's a call to be awake to what is needed desired, possible. This is about having a vision, about having the courage of our convictions. It's also a lot of fun. And yes, fun is the church word. So often churches try to fund their future with what is left over from the bottom line of the budget a few hundred dollars, or worse, a deficit. This means there is never going to be enough money to move ahead. I say we should always budget for growth, for new ideas, visions, or possibilities. What then results is that people hearing this approach rise to the occasion. Our community would never have grown if we had waited to see what we had left over and marched on from there. In the last three years, he'll, um, uh, John Pentland says, we have increased our budget by almost $100,000 annually. The pre presentations always spoke of the future and the possibility of greater ministry. It required everyone to participate, eyes wide open, we have never run short. The case is made to the congregation about why and how we plan to meet these goals. And the congregation has risen to the challenge. We have focused on gratitude and abundance. We have centered on who will be blessed because of this new ministry and the results have proven positive. The load has been shared widely, not dependent on a few special givers. The tone of the presentations is thoughtful and smart. It is not pie in the sky or wishful thinking. Gratitude is the forefront. Guilt is left out of the room, and people ask to commit with eyes wide open. We have done this with the vision that we must pay for what we want, not what we have. End of quote. We have just come out of our workshops with some great energy and some great ideas. The outcome, the values and desires that came out of the workshops are certainly a wish list. One group said their goal was to grow the congregation to 300 members. Other groups suggested ways to get there. The main goals, what it boiled down to were, we need a membership system, a team. We need a pastoral care team. We need programs for all ages. And we need to work on truth and reconciliation. There were a lot of other suggestions, and I loved all the ideas. Some involved the arts, music, theater, literature, all so wonderful. So here we are at Canvas time. 
and we've just decided we need to make sure there's growth in our congregation. How does growth happen in a church like the Unitarian Church of Edmonton? In my experience, it ha grows when there is energy, programs, fun, activities, vision, intergenerational gatherings, things for every age group to do. Not just for the people that we have, but for the people we want. The programs have to be in place already for the people that we want. Does this happen with a leap of faith? Or is leaping not required? So let's try on a decision, shall we? Like a cloak. We'll wear it loosely. We decide we are going to go with the status quo. We're going to fund the things we have, not the things we want. So no money for programming, events, no opportunities to support families, no money to improve our communications and online presence. We fund what we have. This decision does not result in growth. And please, tell me how it feels. Not rhetorical. Tell me how that decision feels. Anybody want to say? Depressing. Depressing. Any other words? Audrey? No church in five years. No church in five years. Maybe ten. May I'd give it outside ten. Uh, anyone else? Stagnant. How does it make you feel? Give me a feeling word. We got depressing. My chest gets tight. Pardon? Discouraged. 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 Disheartened. Bored. bored. Totally bores the heck out of me. That's for sure. Now, decide you want programs. Try it on. Wrap it around you like a cloak. You want a director of religious exploration full-time. You want to support families. You want to make sure UCE's website and online social media presence is on par or better than any other congregation. Imagine it. Point to it. Put it in your mind's eye. Programs for people of all ages. Fun and educational events happening weekly. We are working on truth and reconciliation initiatives. We are widening the circle of concern. And we are a growing and going concern. Now, tell me how that feels. Excited. What's another word? Motivated. Motivated. Any others? Exhilarated. Exhilarated. It exhilarates me. Optimistic. Optimistic. Which one do you prefer? It's kind of a no-brainer, isn't it? And I think you do prefer the right, second one. If that is the one that feels right to you, then I encourage you to think about what you can do to make this possible. I think that if you're a member or friend of UCE, that you have to pledge. You know that if you can only pledge $10 a month, you might be pledging a budget line, a whole line, all by yourself for 5 or $10 a month. Wouldn't that be better than telling a committee they can't put on an activity because we've only funded what we have, not what we want? So again, from the startup workshop, here's some of the things that you said you want. I didn't say them. I pretty much kept my mouth shut the entire time. You said you want this for UCE. I didn't say it. Adult programming and family lifespan programs that then contribute that can then contribute to the services. Mentoring programs and opportunities that provide support education and guidelines that allow new membership to evolve. Truth and reconciliation, a priority for everyone, you said, not just the social justice group. You said you want community outreach, membership team, care and connections team, good governance, 
and good relations. I'd say we need a covenant as well. That's me. If we wish to see programming, outreach, healthy congregation initiatives, activities, and families, then we need to fund for what we want, not what we have. I will be pledging, so it is certainly a we. I have faith. I have faith in this congregation. I have faith that each and every one of us will decide that we don't need to leap. We only need to make the decision that what we want is achievable. So let's do it. Let's fund what we want, not what we have. So may it be. Amen. And don't hide your light or your money under a bushel. So let's sing together this little light of mine. That was probably inappropriate, wasn't it? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Not at all. Thank you. Um, all right. Hymn number 118, this little light of mine. Um, stand as you're willing and able. Uh, put your books down. Make your paws. Clap on two and four. <laughs> Could I ask you to extinguish our chalice? Thank you. Our chalice reading is based on the words of Martin Luther King Jr. Faith is taking the first step, even when you can't see the whole staircase. Go with faith. Not the kind that is called to move mountains, but the quieter sort that calls us to take the first step even when the whole staircase sits beyond our view. And as we stride toward the unseen, may we notice that the way unfolds only as we risk walking. And may we remember and trust our, that none of these steps are ones that we take alone. And now I offer you this benediction. Go in hope, for the arc of the universe is long, and we can bend it toward justice. Go in courage, for together we have the strength to confront injustice in our daily lives and the larger world. And go in love, my friends, go in love, because a holy and generous love is both the reason and the means by which we transform the world. Go in love, go in peace, my gentle people, go in peace. And I am so, want to just say this before we end, that I am so excited to have kids in the sanctuary. Yay! Thank you for bringing your children. And I just want to say that I love the noise that is made. Okay, I'm, I'm probably stepping out onto a limb here. I feel the ice, another metaphor, I feel the ice cracking under my feet. However, 
If we don't put up with the noise of children in the sanctuary, if we don't just block it out and focus in on what we want to focus, we will have what we have and not what we want. We have to allow noise in the sanctuary if we want to grow. So I will not be taking complaints about noise in the sanctuary. And now... Let us sing, carry the flame as we go out.